Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of inelaganolide. This work was published in JAX by the groups of Quan Yu and Thomas Maimoni. Inelaganolide was first isolated by Du et al. from Singularia and Elegans in 1999. Preliminary investigations into its biological effects show that it has some activity against leukemia, but its main attraction to chemists is the difficulty in synthesizing its complex structure. It would take until 2022 for the first total synthesis to be published, which was achieved by the Wood Group. Since then, several more syntheses have been published, including one by the Stoltz Group, which I covered on this channel, and also another work by the Firstner Group, which was their synthesis of scabrolide B, where they showed that scabrolide B could be converted to inelaganolide by simply treating it with base, revealing a possible biosynthetic link between these two molecules. Some of the challenges associated with synthesizing this molecule are the fused 675 carbocyclic core, which is part of a network of five fused rings. Embedded within this ring system are nine stereocenters, eight of which are contiguous. The strategy that these researchers would use to construct this molecule involve using Poss and Cand and De Meyer reactions to build up the carbocyclic core, while the De Meyer reaction could also trigger an intramolecular cyclization cascade to form the two other rings. The stereo control in the synthesis would arise from the use of a Keck asymmetric allylation early in the synthesis and using this stereochemistry to template all further reactions. So let's start the synthesis with this Keck asymmetric allylation. This reaction involves the addition of allyl tributyl tin to an aldehyde. This uses titanium isopropoxide, TFA, and a chiral s binol ligand to produce the target compound with a 93% yield and a 99% EE. The TFA first protonates the isopropoxide ligands. This weakens their coordination to the titanium and makes it easier for the s binol ligand to displace them. These binol ligands are chiral as they exhibit a tropoisomerism, which is a type of axial chirality that arises from hindered rotation about a single bond. This titanium binol complex then reacts with the allyl tributyl tin and the aldehyde. It coordinates to the aldehyde, making it more electrophilic, and it has been proposed, but not fully proven, that the allyl group first coordinates the titanium, while the tin bonds to the displaced oxygen of the binol ligand. The allyl group then attacks the aldehyde, forming the nuchiral centre, which is protonated upon workup to produce a secondary alcohol. Taking this compound forward, the allyl group was then subject to a vacuum oxidation. This was carried out using Sigmund's modification, which utilizes a palladium spartane complex, dimethyl acetamide, and water as solvents, and is carried out under an oxygen atmosphere. The palladium complex first coordinates to the more starkly accessible alkene, and the addition of water triggers an oxypallidation process. A beta hydride elimination then occurs, forming an enol that rapidly tautomerizes to form the target ketone. Hydrochloric acid is then eliminated from the palladium complex, forming a palladium zero species that is then reoxidized by oxygen present in the atmosphere to regenerate the palladium two starting complex. In the next step of the synthesis, the hydroxyl group was first silated using TBS chloride and lithium HMDS, and after stirring the reaction mixture for two hours, lithium ethoxyacetylide was then added. This adds to the ketone, forming a carbon-carbon bond, and the alkoxide is protonated upon workup to form a hydroxyl group, generating the product in a 66% yield, with a 22% yield of its epimer. The stereoselectivity of this reaction is driven by the steric bulk of the TBS group. They found that selectivity for the opposite epimer could be obtained using chelation control for this addition. With the acetylide in place, they then carried out a pass and canned reaction. Dicobalt octocarbonyl first coordinates to both the alkene and the alkyne. An oxidative addition then occurs, together with the formation of a carbon-carbon bond. Another equivalent of carbon monoxide then coordinates to the cobalt, driving a migratory insertion to form a carbon-carbon bond between the position coordinated to the cobalt and one of the carbon monoxide ligands already present in the molecule. A reductive elimination then occurs, regenerating the cobalt catalyst and forming the final of the three carbon-carbon bonds generating the target bicycle with an 84% yield and a 13 to 1 DR. With this in hand, they then had to construct a challenging enone enol ester. To do this, 
the compound was first reacted with TBS triflate, which silated the tertiary hydroxyl group, together with ketone, to form a cyclopentadienyl silyl enol ether. Hydrochloric acid was then added to the reaction mixture to hydrolyze the ethoxy enol ether, and this was followed by HF and pyridine to selectively hydrolyze the TBS silyl enol ether. This formed the target compound in a 55% yield, and the structure was confirmed using X ray crystallography. With this enol now constructed, they could then carry out the critical de Mayo reaction cyclization cascade. The compound was dissolved in acetonitrile, and 2 cyclohexenol was added. After degassing, the mixture was photoirradiated at 300 nanometers at minus 20 degrees for 20 hours. This promoted a cycloaddition between the double bond of the enol and the double bond of the cyclohexene. This intermediate proved to be quite unstable, so they took advantage of this and developed a cyclization cascade. The reaction was warmed to room temperature and hydrochloric acid was added. This promotes a fragmentation reaction, where one of the carbon-carbon bonds of the cyclobutane moiety fragments, together with the formation of ketone from the hydroxyl group. This fragmentation forms the central seven-membered ring of inalganolide. The hydrochloric acid also deprotects the two TPS groups present in the molecule, and an intramolecular transesterification of the methyl ester occurs, eliminating methanol and forming a five-membered lactone. Protonation of the newly formed ketone makes it more electrophilic, and this is then attacked by the remaining hydroxyl group, forming the target cyclic hemiacetal. This cascade completed the formation of all five rings required for inalaganolide in a 52% yield, and the structure was once again proven using extra crystallography, demonstrating that the correct stereochemistry had been formed. With the core ring structure now complete, all that remained in the synthesis was to install the correct oxidation pattern in the final pendant isopropenyl unit. In the course of these studies, they found that they could selectively chlorinate the hemiacetal using sulfuryl chloride, DMAP, and triethylamine. The sulfuryl group can undergo an SN1 substitution, first being eliminated to form a stabilized carbocation, which is then attacked by chloride, forming the product in a 79% yield. This was then dechlorinated in the next step using samarium iodide. This abstracts a chlorine radical, forming a more stable samarium 3 complex, and the resulting carbon radical can then react with methanol forming the dehalogenated compound in a 93% yield. Turning their attention to the remaining hydroxyl group, they then carried out an oxidation using phenyl selenium anhydride. This is attacked by the hydroxyl group, forming a selenoester. This can undergo an intramolecular hydride abstraction, eliminating phenyl selenol and forming a ketone. Formation of an enolate, promoted by the presence of pyridine in the solution, generates a nucleophile that can then attack another equivalent of the phenyl selenium anhydride, and once again, another hydride abstraction occurs, eliminating selenol to form the target enone in an 81% yield. With this in place, the synthesis could then be completed with a simple conjugate addition. Isopropenyl magnesium bromide first reacts with copper bromide dimethyl sulfide. This forms an organocuprate reagent that preferentially reacts with the conjugate position rather than direct addition to the ketone. This reaction showed excellent stereoselectivity, preferentially adding to the desired phase, with a greater than 20 to 1 DR and a 76% overall yield of the target product in elaganolide. Well, that's everything for this short and rather remarkable synthesis. Join me in the next video where we will be looking at another Mimoni synthesis, this time Econocarmazine Sulfonine A.